Constellation and Meta have inked a 20-year power deal, and as part of it, the output from the Clinton Clean Energy Center in Illinois will support Meta's clean energy goals. The agreement comes as the social media giant's energy demand soar due to its AI data center expansion. Mizuho America's Managing Director and Senior Analyst Anthony Crowdell joins us now to discuss. Anthony, this is just the latest. We've had these deals coming um, sort of trickling out now. Um, what is your best estimate of the sort of terms of this deal, how it compares to what we've heard thus far, and sort of what it could tell us about future deals? Sure, so, so a lot to unpack there. Yeah, good afternoon, and I think, you know, when you think of the existing deals we've seen, maybe it's two. We saw the Talent Amazon deal, which was pricing around $70 a megawatt hour. That deal is still being challenged at the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission but we'll include that deal and include the uh, pricing of $70. The only other deal we really saw was the Microsoft Three Mile Island. And what was unique about that deal, that was about bringing new nuclear power on. It was the Three Mile Island plant now called the Crane Energy Center, bringing that back online. And when you look at the pricing there, it was probably about $90, $95 add in tax credits, clean energy credits. You probably had a whopping like $145, but again, Microsoft paying that. So there's been deals, this may be the third deal, uh, a third deal with nuclear plants, but each very unique. And so this is kind of the first deal, that's what we're gonna use the term in front of the meter, where we call it just like kind of a virtual PPA. And it takes the output of uh, the Clinton Energy or Clinton Nuclear Plant in Illinois. And best we could do is pricing is maybe somewhere around 75 to $80 a megawatt hour. Um, very good price, forward curve for power in that part of Illinois round the clock, maybe somewhere $40-ish, $45. So it's a very nice contract relative to where the forward curve is. Um, but it's the first contract we've re really seen with the existing nuclear plant that's in front of the meter. Your question of what this means for additional contracts, I mean, that'll be interesting. Obviously, this is now the mark. Let's just call it $80. Uh, this will be the mark of where they're going to be judged at. But does this create a scarcity or a FOMO mentality where other large tech now jump in to get that? That's what we want to see. But I think seeing the stock price today, and you put a great chart on there, I think news that really spiked up. But maybe as people were maybe over their skis thinking we saw $100 or reference the Microsoft price earlier, 100 or north of $100, as that trickled down to maybe it's an $80 price, which is still attractive, but clearly fully priced in. I think we're looking at right now the stock is down a dollar. Mm -hmm. Anthony, I'm curious, the Trump administration, fans of nuclear, you saw the president sign that, that executive order late last month. What do you think uh, the impact of that EO could be on the industry long term, Anthony? With, with the exception, if you think big tech comes in and tells a IPP, independent power producer or a utility, you could use our balance sheet to build a nuclear plant, meaning any cost overruns you have with construction, supply chain issues, Google is gonna underwrite all of that and said, we got you covered, but we're gonna pay for any cost overrun. Aside from that, the executive order will mean absolutely nothing. I do not see, I mean, Constellation is the best operator in the space. They have the deepest nuclear bench, there, if anyone was going to build a nuclear plant, it would be Constellation. And right now, Constellation has said, we are not building it on their balance sheet. Again, if Meta made a deal with them tomorrow that said, let's build a plant together and we will take all the, the risk and cost overruns, I think that's all you will see. So I'm not expecting you're going to see any real change in how many nuclear plants are being developed in this country right now. And it's, so far, it's zero. That is really fasc fascinating to, to hear you say that, Anthony. I mean, obviously, the industry now has also really turned to the promise of uh, small modular reactors, right? The, that some of the smaller, um, not yet operational producers are trying to develop. What do you see as the timeline and role? I mean, those are years out is what they've stated, but what do you see as the role there in the industry? I mean, it's years out. I mean, Julie, you said it best. They're years out, and if you just think about it, they're probably 10 or 15 years. Sure, if SMRs deliver what they say they can on on the cost they say they could do it, which is pretty attractive cost, I mean, it's a game changer and probably the biggest, uh, the biggest,
hurt will be to gas because the way SMRs tell you what they could do, it would just displace gas out of what we call a dispatch curve of when you would uh, turn on and off plants. But this is 10 or 15 years down the road. We're thinking 2035, 2040. And other than, again, big tech using a balance sheet or unfortunately, since all of us are taxpayers, a state or city municipality saying we will fund it or the federal government fund it, I don't think anyone's looking to jump into SMRs. I think there's a long line of utilities and you know IPPs that want to be maybe the second or third company to develop an SMR, but I don't think SMRs, while they'll play a vital role, I just don't see the technology there, and it's going to require um, you know who's going to be the um, you know pioneer to throw out their balance sheet to go with a project that has not been on that has not been proven yet. So Anthony, let me bring it back to what investors should be doing, right? And I wonder. Um, because I know, for example, you have a neutral, I believe, on Constellation. Are there any um, publicly traded stocks right now that you think investors should be buying tied to the prospects for nuclear specifically? Yeah, and I've been wrong on Constellation. It's gone up like 5x. Uh, I see this trading at a 70% premium, just to tell you a 70% PE premium uh, versus the electric utility space. So... You know, it doesn't seem to matter. People just want to keep buying this nuclear thematic, and it doesn't seem like they're looking at the valuation. Um, sure, I guess if you keep getting $80, $90 contracts, um, maybe it works. But we saw the volatility in this. I think uh, last time we spoke, it was following Deep Seek in late January, and the stock marched down to 150 So there's a lot of volatility here, and it's, you know, typically when stocks trade, it's huge valuation in the utility space. It's that they're very safe and secure, not much volatility. Um, th this is different. So what stocks I would like, I like PEG, uh, New Jersey Utility, that also has exposure to uh, a merchant. We call it nuclear plants. I actually share a plant in Pennsylvania called Peach Bottom at Constellation. Clearly, the upside is better on a Constellation or an IPP, but there's no downside protection or very little downside protection. And as we saw with Constellation, Back in January and February, the stock went to 150. Here, at least PEG, you have one of the better utilities in the country in New Jersey operating, provides some downside protection. I think that's the better way to play it. But for pure upside, foot on the you know nuclear pedal or gas pedal, however you want to put it, uh, investors don't seem to be worried about the 70%, 75% premium at the close of yesterday, mm -hmm. PE premium versus the electric utilities with paying for a constellation. I think there's other value, better value elsewhere. Anthony, it's always great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us today. You bet.